We are live. Hey, Mom. Hey. Hey, again. <laughs> Happy Monday morning again. <laughs> yeah, Monday afternoon. Monday afternoon. You're in, in Chicago, Monday morning, yeah. California. Yeah. Uh, and we're drinking some tea. We've got people joining us, whether they know it or not, because we're having some technical difficulties. We have a bunch of people have said the teas that they're drinking and one beer drinker on a Monday, which is impressive to say the least um yeah so let's talk about what we're drinking you picked this out mom mm -hmm. um and i don't even know if jay had got it but uh we're drinking arabian night our um green black uh high mixture right so green tea from china uh, black tea from india sri lanka and from india sri lanka and china Rose blossoms, jasmine blossoms, sunflower blossoms, and a little bit of flavor. Yeah, and it's delicious. And I chose it because, well, it's Monday morning. Sometimes you need something to get you going. Yeah, yeah. So the black and the green tea does that. And uh, I haven't had it in a while. forgot how much I really like it because I'm not a big flowery tea drinker but I think the black and the green tones down the flower a little bit. Yeah. But after steeping it, when I looked into the little strainer, oh my God, the beautiful uh, red rose petals. Yeah, I don't know if it, it can be seen, but- It's hard to, it's hard yeah, to see. It's yes. hard to see it, but there's and beautiful the, petals inside my- Little inside white, my tea strainer. The little white jasmine and the, the yellowish sunflower. I, I mean, it's just, it's beautiful. And it's a it's, veritable rainbow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great for a Monday morning. Jay, are you stressing uh, a little bit because of technical difficulties? Yeah. Give me a second. I'm just trying to send in this. <laughs> it's okay. Can, yeah. Take care of that. We can listen to your Flip flop, bubble uh, poppings with the yeah. with the technical support. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> Sorry, that brings us to a topic for today. Yeah, um, which is change, which we've all been experiencing a lot of, probably wherever you are in the world, whoever you whoever are, you are. Mm -hmm. um, wherever you are, you're experiencing it. Um, and I thought we would talk about any topics around that and it seems fitting in a way that we had to adjust and start our video later without two platforms uh, when the day we talk about change tomorrow well, we're going to talk about normalcy and everything going right i think but uh, <laughs> please can we do that that would be amazing you know yeah. what i find amazing is that when this started you hadn't told me what you wanted to talk about i know Yet in in this morning's paper in Palm Springs, embracing change in the time of coronavirus. And he, the guy starts out with a quote from Emerson: "We change whether we like it or not." You know. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it's one of those topics that some people don't want to change. It's. It's hard to like change no matter who you are. I think I I think that there's some people where they're sort of just it's in their constitution they're sort of allergic to change and those people uh, have a hard time on something like this and I think we all have part of that in us. Um, and then for me I think sometimes it's if I decide the change is what I want then I'm good with change but it's when change is foisted upon you. Um, by, uh, you know, life or circumstances beyond your control or God forbid someone else, someone else's decision without consulting you that it becomes problematic, right? Yeah. Sometimes. I mean, for me, it's hard. That's when I start to get really frustrated and not pleasant, you know? Yeah, it's hard. There are things that help you with that. Um, in Bach flowers, yeah, essences, um, walnut is is the flower essence for change. You know, 
and it brings you peace. And, all, and, and it's also for protection. So like, well, times have changed when kids go to high school, when you change jobs, when you're staying, doing at home, you're, you're doing your job from home, or uh, I don't know, any change in your life. It's also a protection. It's a very good remedy for teenagers to protect them from outside influences. Hmm. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, we could all use that. I see Deb is drinking some lemon balm, calendula, and Tulsi. That seems like a good combination to sort of weather the things coming at us right now, right? Um, That's for sure. Yeah. Kind of lift you up a little bit, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it seems like it. Jay, join us. We miss you. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Roll with it. Roll with it, baby. What are you, what are you drinking? Uh, I didn't have the Arabian night, so I'm drinking the ginger grapefruit green tea again. From last week, yeah. Mm. Well, you can't go wrong with that one. Have a few sips. That was the closest I had that had fruit in it and was and was uh, caffeinated. So I wanted to be on your wavelength. <laughs> Although ours is more floral, but yeah, I think it's not. Uh, coming Flav back to the, it, it had flavorings is what I was saying. Yeah. Yeah, coming back to the tea for a second. There's something about this tea that I've forgotten about which is, um, do you notice, like, I don't know if that's the flavoring when it says they put natural flavoring in there. It's definitely not sweet, first of all. No. Right? There's not a bit of sweetness in this. It's floral and it's tea. But the combination of the green and the black tea has, there's almost like, it borders on like a creaminess to it or something. It's not creamy, but it's like, there's a softness to this yeah. tea that is really mellow and balanced. It almost has like, it's like a step away from getting creamy. It's like so smooth. Do you know what I mean? For sure. Smooth. That's a, it's such a good, so good smooth. word to describe so this because I'm, I have to admit I'm a, a black tea drinker and I like it strong and yeah. bitter. You know, that's how I drink it. People think I'm drinking coffee when they look at it, you know? Yeah. But this definitely gives me satisfaction, yet it's much smoother. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. Um. <sighs> I'm having, uh, you know, like Mondays right now are crazy. It's like because there's no like clear division between weekend and weekday, um, in like the traditional sense, even if for me, I'm used to going, uh, staying home on a Monday and need tea, even though you're going to work on a Monday, it's the world around you. Every, no, the, like all of the signifiers that weekend is over and weekday has begun aren't there. And I think yeah. it's like messing with me. It's messing with everybody, but it's messing with me pretty hard. And I notice it with my kids right now too. I'm like, they don't, like they're having trouble like kicking into like, oh, we got to do school again today. Uh, you know, even if it's homeschool, because I think like the indicators aren't there. I'm wondering like, I'm wondering like, and I'm finding myself like sort of like irritated with the fact that I and they can't like, can't, can't make the shift into like new mode because the usual distinctions aren't there. And so I'm wondering, like, what if I, like, fabricate? Is there a way to, like, completely artificially manufacture something, like, and may say, like, Monday mornings we're going to do this? And that's, like, the signifier to all of us that, like, this, this school week has, become, has begun for me and for them. It's much for me as them. But I'm trying to think of like something fun and special that like will, I don't know, you got any ideas? <laughs> hmm. You know? Uh, I don't. Get up, get up at the oh, same time. I can't hear you. Get up at the same time and then have a special breakfast, I, I, you know, yeah. Monday morning. My, my thought was, shouldn't you maybe just wake up extra early yourself and go do the workout so you're in like pumped blood going to the brain mode 
and then start everyone else might start their day on time. But this strikes me as like, I'm sure, I, I know you're right. It affects everyone. I see it with my kids too, but it's like the framing for you is probably most important. So you can create it for everyone else. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So like if you make some special thing that lets you start the week and your week is bracketed before anyone else is even awake or has to deal with it, then you're going to create it for everyone else. I don't know. That's my yeah, thought. That sounds good. Also, another uh, Bach flower remedy, <laughs> hornbeam. Yeah, is... hornbeam and, and tansy, right? Those are the two well, that I used yeah, to take for tansy that. Tansy is an American flower essence. Uh, so they're I both don't really... for that Monday morning feeling, right? Yeah, Monday morning feeling. Sort of a procrastination, like I can't get started. You know, I don't want to. Maybe I'll just like, maybe I'll just like make a breakfast that has a bunch of that in it for everybody. (laughs) You know, you can put it in their milk or their, whatever they're drinking. Water. Mm -hmm. Um, This sounds weird, but I feel the opposite way. And I, I believe me, I'm definitely not celebrating because of this. So don't take it in the wrong way that I'm saying it's good or I'm, I'm so happy with it. But I feel like Mondays to me are a feeling of everything is moving faster than I can possibly accomplish things. And so I often feel this feeling of like, (sighs) like I got so much to do. I got, oh my God, everything's moving so fast. So to walk to work and have hardly anybody on the streets and then to cross Western Avenue and have like four cars and then to come in and everyone's doing what they need to do and they're distanced and have masks on and no one's really talking to me, I have to say there's a part of me that feels like there's kind of, I'm enjoying some parts of that where I now can look at Monday rather than a feeling of, oh my God, as like, what do I want to accomplish today? And if I can get three things done, like it's a triumphant day, you know? Yeah. Unfortunately, I always get a half a thing done, but yeah. (laughs) So I still feel that way, but. Well, I mean, I think everybody's going to find things that are good changes that come out of this sheltering, you know, and then the the trick is going to be to incorporate some of those things into your normal life after it goes back to normal, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I I I would like to believe, I mean, I I think so. Um, you know, I'm also, so, uh, I didn't say anything to to you guys yesterday when we talked as a family, but I always, I'm a sucker for educational courses, for books, for anything where I feel like it will expand my mind. I probably buy like maybe 10 to 20 times as many books in a year than I can possibly read. Right. (laughs) And at least now I, with samples, like I might send samples of my, to myself on a, you know, e-reader or something like that before I buy them. So it saves me a little bit of money if I'm not going to read them anyway. But um, I bought a book. This is not an endorsement because I haven't read it yet, but it just came out called Limitless. And it's this guy who is like the reading and learning coach to the stars. And I bought it this weekend off of some, you know, podcast or whatever. And then I got it was like, if you buy it today and then p- upload your receipt number from any platform, uh, we'll give you a free, and you do it within 24 hours, we'll give you a free course on yeah. e-learning or on learning in time of coronavirus. So I was like, cool. So I had already bought it. So I just put in the thing and I got the course. And then of course they send me like, and by the way, our best selling reading course that thousands of people have done that's 700 some dollars and on sale for 400 some dollars is yours within 24 hours for uh 60 plus percent off (laughs) and i was like i'm getting suckered and then i was like you know what if i like first of all my kids are home and what he says is essentially like you can average person if they do this for 21 days 10 to 15 minutes a day it's a 21 day course Reading speed goes up uh, three times on average. Two to four times is like where you expect your reading to go. And like his client, Oprah is like, you know, he has pictures of him with Oprah and 
Tony Robbins and all these people. And I was just like, and he, so he said, and if you do it in any time in 30 days, money back guarantee, just write and we'll give you a full refund. So I think I'm a pretty darn fast reader. So I was, I, I don't necessarily care about three times, but I, I then thought as I was deciding at midnight, should I buy this thing? Cause it's going to run out and it might run out and it's almost midnight. I, I might have to buy it today. Um, I thought about my family and thought I have a kid in high school, a kid in seventh grade, my wife, and like, we can all do this and it would be a change that we can try. And for 15 minutes a day, we can watch some videos and then read for 10 minutes a day. So we did it. We started yesterday and one of my children, I don't want to make her feel bad. They're both girls. Um, got very upset and did not want to do it. And the other one uh, who I thought would want, wouldn't want to do it was like, I'll do it. And then, so Rachel's like, I'm doing it too. So the four of us did the first lesson and we read through, we had, uh, he times you on the video. He goes, we're going to start now, get a book ready, get ready. And then he times you and you read two minutes. You count the number of lines and you count the average number of words per line across three lines and you figure out your words per minute. And he's like, now your job is like read for 10, schedule for the next week, 10 minutes of reading each day. And you put it in your calendar. Because if you do that, you're going to do it. Just put it in your calendar. And so we made Nola and Safi write it in their calendar when they're going to read each day. And that's like our change. That's what I was talking about, that change right. that you sort of embrace, even though it seems a little absurd. And I thought for a hundred some dollars money back guarantee for four people, some of whom might become three times as fast on reading, like that seems like a pretty easy investment, even yeah. if it's a challenging time to spend money. Wow. Because it's for your life, right? If it works. That's right. That's right. I, I always think, I mean, that sounds enticing, but does it mean skimming? No, that's why I bought it. He said, this is not speed reading where you skim over things and like read, look for keywords. This is deep understanding reading. You can use it on fiction, nonfiction, whatever. Okay. But it, well, it's, that's, that's interesting because skimming, yeah. I can't, I can't do skimming. I can't. No, no, me neither. I'm not, I've done it, but I'm not really interested in that. I sometimes do it when I just need to like do something for work and I need to make sure I get the key concepts. I'll skim really fast and just live with the part of me that's going, you don't really know what you're reading, you know, but, but I think that I can't do that. This is not that. So he says like, essentially you're going to get two parts. One is our technical tricks, which will help you actually read faster, but still read fully. And the other part is about processing your learning and things that will help you get it deeper and faster at an understanding level if that makes sense wow. so we'll see i don't know maybe i'm a sucker but if i am well i mean hey both can be true it can that's be true. awesome and you can be a sucker well if that's the case then you know then i would expect that to be the most likely answer i i've i've spent a lot of money um on on courses and that's like to me yeah it's important right yeah or like i feel like uh you know that's my throwaway spending like it can be great and if it's not i don't beat myself up over having spent money on educational courses and i feel like as long as i don't feel defrauded if someone made money money off me buying a course but i didn't use it then that's on me and they still were making something that i would have liked so I'm happy to give them the money. Well, right before we were sheltered in place, Dad and I were signed up for um, One Day University. Have you ever seen that? You were telling me about it. Yeah. I've heard of it. Yeah. It's just a half day, actually. But they have um, professors from all over the country yeah. who come and teach that course. But it's in person, so they canceled it, you know. Uh, but it was history of America in 12 different movies. Oh, you know? that's cool. Yeah. It's always like re interesting kind of, some things are kind of off the wall things, but. but we should do a movie episode just talking about best movies, movies we want to watch, movies we have watched sometime soon. Maybe next month, next Monday we'll come with a list. Talk through <laughs> movies, huh? 
Well, we sure. mentioned, someone mentioned yesterday, Parenthood. <clears throat> that was such a funny, yeah. funny movie. And then I thought about Goonies. I mean, there's some really great. Don't give away all of our content <laughs> this week. Sorry, right? sorry. Yeah. Okay. yeah. No, I'm, I'm teasing. But Jay, are you uh, doing anything self-improvement? Are you just like taking care of little kids and trying to run a business and um, DJing okay. and releasing an album all at, at, at just doing that little amount of stuff right now and letting that be enough. <laughs> Which one are you doing? Um, self-improvement? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Or any kind of changes that are like, hey, I might as well use this time, the weirdness of this time to do something uh, different. I'm meditating still. So I'm doing the meditation from that guy that you recommended. I was doing Headspace for like two years. And then yeah. I switched to Waking Up um, from Sam Harris. And it's, I think it's like a more sophisticated meditation. It's not always as um, satisfying. And it's a little heady for me sometimes. Um, it's very like, it's a little brainier. Um, I know even if ultimately it's trying to turn off the brain, his approach feels brainier. Um, uh, but I'm learning to like just take that as an appearance in consciousness. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I like that. It's pretty good. Um, and then, uh, and then I started going to therapy like about bit like earlier this month. Uh, Online. Well, yeah, like it, like, like this, but with a doctor. Yeah. 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 Um, uh that's been really good so i'm enjoying that um but i mean uh, you know he there's I actually saw two therapists at first because i'd never gone to therapy so i was like i don't know like how am i gonna just go with the first person i ever see mm -hmm. like you know like that would be like you've never heard music here you go this is music and you're like what <laughs> this is all of music you know um, um, not that there aren't like many amazing kinds of music out there and there are, but some are for me and some aren't. So I was kind of just like, I'll try. So the first couple of weeks I tried two people. Um, I was kind of interested to see if <clears throat> gender would play into it. So I wanted to see a male therapist and a female therapist. Um, if, if my reaction would be different, um, that turned out not to be at all really a contributing factor. Um, it was more out of, out of your out of curiosity. Which one did you end up with? I ended up with the male therapist, um, even though I, um, uh, yeah, I, it was more about a vibe. Like the 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 female therapist that I was seeing was <clears throat> about. Um, she was very goal oriented. And wanted me to like write down goals for like what I want out of this. And like, and it was very, very um, solution oriented. That's what I'll say. Um, and I have a very strong woman in my life who is very solution oriented. <laughs> and I don't really need that, more of that. Um, <clears throat> and, what about Amina? Yeah, it's definitely Amina. Um, no, yeah. So I no, you know, it wasn't even just that. I was just like, what I'm missing in my life in general is like time to play. And I've been lately, like the last few weeks, like finally playing with my gear again. And I'm like learning new things, and things are coming together. Even this tea time is a is a product of me playing in the studio. Um, we would not be doing it if it weren't for that time. And yeah. so, and so, and that time began without a goal, without a point. Right. And so I need that in my life. And, and then when I was talking to the guy about his style, he was like, look, it sounds to me like what we're doing here needs to be sort of an equivalent of what you need to do musically. You need that time to play with your gear and just have fun and find stuff. He's like, let's just think of this space as a place to take all of your thoughts and emotions and just play with them. And let's just look at them in different ways and just both 
talk about things we notice as we both talk. And I was just like, I love that. And so, <laughs> and so it felt <clears throat> there wasn't a pressure to get anywhere, which is exactly what I don't need. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And so I don't. I, it's been really good. I really enjoy it. And uh, and for me, like seeing the person in in person, it's like no bearing for me. I don't care at all. This is actually like way easier. I it it, it I jumps in the middle of my day, and it's literally like fifty. 55 minutes or whatever there is no like i have to drive over there i have to drive back i have to go get gas i can get distracted by anything i can it it, it is one hour in my day that is it you know what i mean yeah yeah that's good i i find that if i don't get out then i would then i feel like it doesn't i don't have enough walled off mental space to to reflect i got a door right there it's just like i just close it yeah, but it's like no, I'm, just I'm, just it's like, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I just you know? yeah, no, I I understand that like people are like I really want to see my therapist or whatever, but uh, it for me it's like and maybe it's because I started that way, you know, yeah. so it just feels normal and it feels good. <clears throat> um, I think he would prefer it, <laughs> you know. But for me, yeah. I'm like oh, this is fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. I don't know. What else? I don't know, man. Change, change, change. Things are changing. They are. You know, it's like, uh, you're also like seeing, um, a lot of States starting like phase one of reopening. And then there's like a lot of heat about whether that's a good idea or not. And just people's in like natural human desire for like contact and normalcy and like, just like worried about the the economy their local economy and stuff too and all of like just juggling all of those things and then like thinking about you know like uh you know it, it just seems like um we're just lacking a lot of nuance right now in the conversation and it's like if you're if you're acknowledging that it's hard or that you want to see somebody then you're like a you know, you're like a mass murderer or something. And if you're, and if you're, um, you know, and if you're like, look, there are people out there who are susceptible in nursing homes and frontline workers, then you're like a heartless person or something like that. You know, it feels like so extreme right now. And I'm just like, I don't know. I'm a little like, I have like, I have uh, outrage fatigue, you know, like everyone's outraged all the time. And I'm feeling like a little bit like, I just can't be that angry all the time. <laughs> you know, like I'm so yeah. tired. I tired think I must successfully that, um, avoid a lot of that because I don't feel that way. I mean, I don't feel that even people are that way. Like every time I hear it, I sort of just kind of steer my ears and my attention in a different direction. And I don't know, but I know what you mean. I feel it sometimes, the judgment of myself. And then I'm like, uh, well, do, right now, no one really has a true plan. Doesn't seem to me. I mean, flatten the curve is part of a plan, but it's like, uh, it's the phase one of a plan that the unspoken- We're just seeing what happens. Unspoken right? assumption of the second part is, and we wait for something breakthrough to help make this so we can actually reopen. And that's the part where you, okay, you flatten it so that we don't overwhelm health systems, which will hopefully keep people alive, which I agree with. But then when do you reopen and how long do we stay flattened? And, you know, I, I've been reading these things where it's like, if you're waiting for herd immunity, you're still going to kill a lot of people. You know, a lot of people will die no matter when that is. It's just whether you spread it out or it might be less if you spread it out, but because you won't have people without with needs that don't aren't able to be filled because the system is so stretched, right? right. Which is that, of course, like I, I don't want anybody to, to die, but, it's, but it is, it does leave this unopened, this unanswered question of like, hey, does anyone know when we can get back to something like normal? And I think we should all acknowledge that like, it's not the, you know, what you need in one place is not the same as another place, even places that are similar, right? There are rural places right now that are having a hard time, and a lot of them have very little problems at all. 
uh, and there are some cities that are, you know, I don't want to say anything's good, but but not having a significant problem, and others are crushed. So I don't know. I think uh, this is when I prefer to bring back to like, what are you doing personally to address change? Because <laughs> it seems like I don't know really what I can do about that. And I don't want to go down that rabbit hole for too long mm. before I start to get feeling like uh, the world is is not as, you know, I can't, well, it's really hard, hard to maintain have, optimism. I'm really glad I have yoga studio app. <laughs> Me too. Because, I mean... Gosh, I certainly get money's worth out of it now, you know. They have so much to offer, and it it's easy. Jeffrey, it's like, because I don't have to go to the yoga studio to yeah. do yoga. I just turned on that, that app on my iPad, and I'm done. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think some of those things, you know, we're, we're going to see a very different you know, whether we see a very different world when we emerge or our heads come up from for air out of this quarantine situation, um, we will see a very different world in terms of that, you know, um, you know, like there is, um, a lot of things, (laughs) there's a lot of things you can get done still, You you know, like you can still work out. It's actually a lot less uh, invasive into your day and life and routine to just pop open an iPad and quickly do it and get back to your work. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. You know, it doesn't, like like Tia was saying, it doesn't give you the break you maybe need sometimes, like with the going to a real live thing, you know? And uh-huh. it doesn't, for me, exercise, it doesn't give me the same group shame that I need to really <laughs> to like to like do really well and my and to like to to catalyze Push yourself. catalyze my my sense of competition because there's not someone next to me that I'm like I'm better than them you know what I mean <laughs> yeah I need I like need that I'm, and I'm being totally honest like I really do need that at, at a gym. Oh, I, I, I miss my gym a lot you know um, yeah you know, I don't need that because I, I do need that, but I feel like every time I do that, I end up injuring myself because I'm like, I, I'm convinced I have to be better than everyone. And in reality, like I should be holding down the bottom of the, of the, of the average, you know what I mean? And so I overdo it. And then I'm like, oh, I can't move my neck for like three months because that one time when I went to Jay's class and decided to try and do a half speed of him, you know? <laughs> Um, anyway, yeah, so I'm, I'm with mom. I'm doing the yoga. The yoga, yoga was awesome today. Feeling like feeling from my ankles up to my neck and all that stuff sort of like scream as I try to get it to release and then just sort of use my meditation tricks of like, okay, breathe in and just feel it and notice it. And like that reaction is partly me going, and like, then you start to relax. You're like, okay, yeah, it's tight there, but I can deal with it. Yeah, and everything starts relaxed. That's a great feeling. Yeah. You know? Besides whoever is whoever is doing the dialogue, at least on the ones I do, she has the most calming, soothing voice. Yeah. 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 She's definitely the other love of my life. Release all the little muscles yeah. around your eyes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I know we would be on our ski trip and T and Bob and, and T would be in the other room doing that. And I was like, what's going on? Who's over there? She sounds like yeah. extremely like attractive and soothing. Yeah. <laughs> she is. Um, Speaking of your seat, ski trip, <clears throat> Pete was with you correct yeah and when you talked about change and how change is hard for people when you guys were little I always saw Pete as the most "Eh, okay we can't we can't go to great America okay let's go to the park you know (laughs) yeah he never seemed to get like upset about what he couldn't do he'd find something else yeah that's still yes and I would say that's still Pete when you arrive in your ski trip and find out you have a thrombosis in your leg and then just decide to talk to enough people and decide to roll with it and then do like a monumental eight hour hike up three mountains hike 
two two days later. That <laughs> takes a lot of changeability. After he drove himself to the hospital first, you know? three two or three times he went in. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. It was just like, well, here's he's very he's a very much a realist, you know. He like looks at the situation and is like, here are my options. He's still like that. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Um, speaking of which, when I've been dealing with struggles of change, it's memories of travel have been especially vivid and something I've been mm. really grateful for lately. Like I was thinking about, I mean, this past, in the past year, I've gone to some amazing places. Mm -hmm. It was a good year for traveling for me, yeah. for both business and personally. And I think about those times and they seem like years ago. And then I think it wasn't even a year ago that I was in, you know, Germany and Iceland or whatever. And remembering those times in my family, they feel even more precious now. Yeah. And I, you know what Alaska I Alaska with you guys? Yeah. I, I mean, close your eyes and just put yourself there again. And I, I sometimes do that. Like, I think about a particular time when you guys were were young, little, like out of Bangs Lake on a boat. And, you know, if you close your eyes and you're there, I feel like my body actually gets to that young spot again. Yeah. You know? You know? It does. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's, I always think that's fourth dimension, right? That's when you realize like our, the matter of us may be caught up in time yeah. but the spirit is yeah i don't know that we really are caught as caught physics is i mean even scientifically it's like physics is sort of showing the way that we're not really as stuck in time as we think we are uh and i don't know what that means but <laughs> i like saying it and sounding deep <laughs> uh, i think you got like i think that arabian nights went to your head a little bit i'm feeling great right now yeah, I'm feeling a little tea drunk. And on that, I think I'm going to say goodbye to you guys. All right. All right. Hey, Mama, I love you. I miss you. Love you, too. Bye, Anthony. See you, Mom. Thanks for joining us. Um, Have yeah. a great day. You, too. All right. Talk to you soon. All right. Love you. Bye, everybody. Thanks. If you caught this, wherever you caught it.